<laughs> Come on and buffer. There we go. Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to my Black Ops 3 stream. Today, I'm mostly going to be playing and having fun. I had a very stressful weekend. I went home to help my father and grandmother, both of which have mental disorders in various ways. Father has a TBI, grandmother has dementia, and... It was admittedly very stressful. I didn't get an opportunity to play video games for a week, did a lot of work in the, you know, mental health field, and today I just want to play Black Ops 3 and have a good time. Oh my god. Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to my Black I forgot to mute myself. You can see I'm a little bit discombobulated. On top of that, I do have an overall goal. I'm going to be going for Master Prestige or 10th Prestige or whatever it is in this game. I'm going to go all the way up to the top and unlock all the guns. I think I'm a little bit less than halfway there right now, so I have a very long way to go. And if you haven't noticed, uh, Dog Cam over here, this fat dog, is open, it's live, and it's working today. So the Dog Cam will stay just until, I don't know, I guess the dog moves. Or, you know, I'll turn it off in-game. Hello, my overheat, and hello, think so, our only sponsors in the chat today. And as always, when I'm streaming, it is live and joinable. It's an open lobby. Live, uh, live, let's see, we should have live subscribers working. Yes, we do. That popped up. And live donations working. Pretty much standard stream. Everything's working, going good. I'd like to play Metro because I haven't got a chance to play that in a while. <coughs> Almost got sick while I was traveling, too. You had to fly to an airport so small that I had to get on a single propeller airplane. And I don't mean dual propellers, I don't mean one engine, I mean one propeller, like Indiana Jones style, like where you walk out onto the tarmac and you climb up a ladder to get into the airplane. We landed at an airport where the grass wasn't even mowed. It was just overflowed everywhere with a bunch of chaos and mess. <clears throat> Hello, Dreamin' Cyrus, nice to see you. Hello, Willy Billy 12 Hello, Floris Teller, Connor Dale. Somebody's name is my YouTube account. That's very clever, sir. Uh, Tons has subscribed. Thank you for subscribing, Tons and Grievous. Appreciate that as well. I guess now that the game is started, it's time to turn off the Dog Cam and the Dog House and turn off that little red line that'll pop up right there. And we are set to play a little bit of Black Ops 3. I'm gonna admit to you guys right off the start here that I have not played Black Ops 3 in maybe a week. I mean, I played it just a little bit last night to build the thumbnail, which I think is particularly sexy. But I'm about as rusty as you can possibly be at this game, and I know it too. So I'm just gonna try to do my thing here and not screw anything up. Let's see who's rushing out here. Ah, uh, did nobody rush out here? Oh, that's gonna be bad for your snipers that like to hang out up in the window. I know where you guys are. Hey, but I'll just take a little quick headshot on you. I don't even need your snipper rifle. Quick headshot on you. Can we get another? Oh, teammates mopped him up. All right. At this point, my teammates are going to get B, and I'm just going to keep on killing people. Keep them in the spawn. Keep them busy. And it'll work out just fine for the rest of my team if I can aim today. I'm aiming like a potato. Thank you, Matt Hoops uh, and Waffle Sauce for subscribing. Ruben, I can't even say that. <laughs> hey, but what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, got off to a good start, slowing down a little bit, but we're going to keep this up. Um, and now, uh, Sean P., I'm not Swifter's son. I've only met Swifter once. I'm, I got a, what? I got a huge $200 donation right off the bat. That is absolutely bonanas here. Let me go ahead and, what is going on today? Dreamin' Cyrus donated $200 and says, thanks for all the tips lately. It is very helpful and much appreciated. Thank you, man. That's crazy. That is an insanely huge donation. I appreciate it. I, I have no idea, you know, we've been talking to Dream and Cyrus a lot about PCs and stuff. We moved over to the business email. I have no idea what you do for a living, but you must be like Mr. Moneybags. And Matman the Boy has sponsored the channel. I've got so many notifications popping up, I can't even play the game properly. Thank you for the massive donation, and thank you for the new sponsorship, sir. I appreciate it. Speaking of sponsors, I have some good news for you guys. I renegotiated my contract with Scuff Gaming. And that's going to include some giveaways. So when the time comes, uh, there will be scuff controllers to do giveaways with live on the stream. Well, I don't know what all this crap is going on here. A bunch of what? what? Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and take alpha. So we're going to have some more scuff controllers to give away and some nice stuff like that for you guys. Hopefully you all enjoy it. Let's see what's going on. Austin Nunez, subscribe. Thank you very much. I'm having... It's the craziest trick to, like, play COD and read all these messages at the same time. Thank you for the compliments, Hamshed Muhammad. Appreciate it. Gotta scoot off the edge. I like scooting off the edge because it puts me over here quicker. Safer. Go prone right here. Call this in. 
Okay, so we're gonna throw a little stun. You always catch him. There's another one right around the corner, I know. Probably over here sniping. And now I've overextended, so you can't go too far around the corner or you die, basically. But you can do this. This occasionally catches somebody. I like bouncing grenades directly around the corner, because they just... They're never prepared for that. We're probably gonna end up flipping the spawns here very shortly. Come on. There we go. See if I can catch somebody. Somebody wants to come around the corner and play? Anybody wants to come around the corner and play? I want to do some arrow stuff. I like the arrow. I was very disappointed when this week I saw that the arrow was on hiatus. That made me very sad. Let's get this guy. Can we get that one? Nope. Okay, well, I'm going to just take Charlie then. Oh, yes! Loving it. That's okay. Matt Man the Boy, thank you for sponsoring the channel, man. Appreciate it. Monster0429, man. Good to see you. Glad you're enjoying the early morning stream. I'm normally a night owl, you know. I really kind of hate getting up early in the morning, but... Wow, that was some Vonder lag. Uh, the deal for me today was that I have, uh, I have two things going on. I've got a friend's birthday party, or a friend's one-year-old son birthday party. Nico Bellic, nice to see you. Speaking of Weevil, man, I have a Weevil class somebody breaking out later today. Old high school friend of mine had a boy here in Texas, and he's having his, like, first birthday party, so I'm gonna go to that in a little bit. It's pretty much right in the middle of the day and right in the middle of my normal stream time, so that's complicated things for me a little bit, but I said I'd be there and I try to keep my word, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, Sobin, Amir, all of my good long shot metal tips have been screwed up because of the most recent patch. It was all about that barracks site, but now it's much more difficult. But there's more out here. There's always somebody out here. Got the last kill. Very good. And then I believe I have a dinner to go to later tonight with some uh, friends locally. And then got yeah, quite a few things going on. <clears throat> Favorite weapons? Hey, the cowboy. Good to see you, man. Um, how do I join? Please help. You just join the game in progress. Just join my name. Join off of anybody. Funky Jesus has subscribed. Very nice name there. Thank you for subscribing, Funky Jesus. Kino Lino, good to see you. Yeah, just join off any of these people. Trevor Miller. Who else in this game? I'm going to get an easy flag cap here because I don't really feel like rushing this particular round. I don't think I can call in my score streaks for another second. I'm going to try to get around the corner before I do it. Can I do it? Nope. Alright. Basically, we want to get ro right here in this corner. And uh, my talon should keep most of them busy or too busy to mess with me. Got to back up around the... Um, that's bad. The Talon is down. That's kind of scary, actually, because that's not supposed to be happening. I know where they're at, though. Oh, I couldn't! Ugh, the accuracy just wasn't there. This gun does have some recoil, and when you're not running a foregrip, you do uh, run a risk of missing. Hmm. Yeah, but man, you wanted the Weevil? I'll break out the Weevil. Henry Bruce and subscribe. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Let's see. Um, trying to pick up a good question from the chat right now, but it's kind of all chaos at the moment. What is this crap? What is this? What are you doing, man? What? What? Hello, Armado and Cosmic Cow. Cosmic Cow's got a good username right there. Uh, I believe that is Angel. Oh, don't shoot me. Got a big $10 donation right off the bat here. Getting crazy today. Um, I'm going to move all my windows around so that I can read these a little bit more live. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see if I can move my windows. There we go. That window is moved. <clears throat> yeah, Archangel, 6'6". Six, six says, uh, hey Drift, you're back home early, good to see you again, we missed you, thank you man, I appreciate it. And yeah, I did manage to get back a little bit early. I did a lot of videos earlier this week, actually there were a lot more collaborative projects than stuff that I worked on, but you saw the two in-depths, I finished those early, and I had two stream highlights and a history of COD, and all of a sudden I had like five or six videos already done, I thought to myself, well, you know, I have to go help my dad, I'm a grandmother, and I've already got all this content done, so, why not just go ahead and, uh, do it, you know? And that's pretty much what happened this week. I just, I got a little bit ahead in the content and decided to go on back to my hometown and help out my, uh, father and grandmother. And I'm very glad to be back early. I'm really glad to be back early. It's very stressful to be there. You know, they're very kind people. I mean, well, I managed to, I did have some fun conversations with my dad. But at the end of the day, they both have different brain injuries, which makes it very stressful. It was very sad to see my grandmother on loop. She was asking me over and over again, you know, how 
how did, how did, I'm not gonna say his name, like, how did my grandfather die? And I would tell her how he died, and she would say, oh, that's so sad, and cry. And then a little bit later, she would ask me, you know, I can't remember how he died. How did he die? Can you please tell me? And I would answer it again, so every time, over and over. We also have this, this memory issue where everything kind of gets, uh, oh, man, I'm trying to hang in here. Kind of, uh, I don't know, I think the word is, or phrase is, rose-colored glasses. So, ooh, I caught somebody. Oh, you thought I was about to rush the corner, didn't you? <laughs> oh, gave JD Driven Below, or J Driven Below, some easy kills. And that's probably enough. There's gonna be another one right around the corner. Whoop. Man, we are just, we are just putting these poor guys on lockdown today. They're having a rough day. I'm having a very rough day and I'm just spawn killing him like crazy. Yeah, she remembers the guy being perfect and unfortunately my grandfather was very far from perfect. Uh, he beat me a good bit as a kid. He beat my father extremely, I mean, my father suffered through some extremely bad child abuse, like some, you know, lifetime TV drama level craziness. He used to beat my grandmother a lot too, she'd kind of step in and take the beatings for us. But since she only remembers the good parts about the man, I would sit there and she would talk about, oh, how great he was and how kind he was and how he was nice to us and how he never, ever laid a finger on anybody. I just about can't stomach that. I'm way too old to sit around and listen to that kind of nonsense. It drove me crazy. I love her to death. I spent as much time with her as I could. But when she was talking about how kind my grandfather was and how he never laid a finger on anybody, and now I'm sitting there remembering how many times I got socked in the face or watching her get beat. I just can't, man. Yes, can't do that. Um, my overpeat says, if you had to choose to be Republican or Democrat, which one would you be? That's a pretty god-awful choice. I consider myself independent. Uh, not moderate, that's different. Uh, Mans Mortison has subscribed, thank you very much. Moderate is different than independent. Moderate means you're between the two. I'm not between the two, but I am independent. Generally speaking, I end up being closer to libertarian. Uh... More like a very liberal libertarian. We got a new sponsor, Pitbull YouTube. Pitbull YT, thank you for sponsoring the channel, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I managed to do pretty good this game for not having played COD in a bit. Thank you for sponsoring the channel, Pitbull. I appreciate it, man. Welcome to Team Drift. Hope you enjoy the sub, the badge, the emote, all that good stuff, kind of stuff. And FaZe Hagjohn, your senpai has noticed you. You have been noticed by senpai. Uh, not doing the gamer weight loss contest again. Owen Nugent and Fear Illusions has subscribed. Thank you guys for subscribing, along with Diamond Jason. That's a pretty cool name. Connor, good to see you. you. Guys, I wish I had a name like Diamond. Diamond's a pretty dope name, in my opinion. Okay, so if we're going to do the Weevil next, I'm going to do Evac. Um, I'll go ahead and keep Flak Jacket on this little map, and that ought, all this ought to be fine. I kind of want Fast Mags, but this should be okay. It's pretty standard SMG setup. I've already got a bunch of mags in there, so I'm a bunch of rounds in the magazine, so it should be totally fine. What should Infinity War do for their next game? I say dinosaurs. Hello, Ben, and thank you for sponsoring Nicholas Schilling. Good to see you, man. Welcome to Team Drift. God bless. I, I keep I watch uh, I'm a cutie pie stream League of Legends, so I keep wanting to say God bless and welcome to the Big Dick Club. Thank you for sponsoring, man. I appreciate it. Um, let's see, ooh, um, bum, 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 bum. Archangel, I have considered getting the division, but I'm kind of iffy on it, I might just beg Ubisoft for a code, uh, man, thank you Dreamin' Cyrus, appreciate it, oh yeah, the, the, my wife's belt buckle's looking really good, my wife is building a Seraph cosplay right now on her stream, Black Ops has subscribed, the chat is going crazy fast right now, along with Masta's sniper, but this is a good time, while you guys are here and we're, we're talking to you and, uh, Having a good conversation here. Favorite Biester, that's an interesting name. And Andrew Ray. I do have ooh, ooh, I have a question. Uh, Space Badger says, I bid thee a warm welcome back. It's awesome to have you streaming again. Nothing better than getting back in the good old routine of watching your gameplay and hearing your words of wisdom and sometimes inappropriate humor. Thank you, Space Badger. By the way, Space Badger, I met at PAX South. I managed to use your Chick-fil-A gift card the other night. I actually used it two or three times before it was used up, so I've eaten a lot of delicious Chick-fil-A chicken on your behalf. I think I went there like twice on Sunday when it was closed. I have no idea why, but I usually only want to eat Chick-fil-A 
on Sunday. I do see that Imika is in the game, and Haley JD has also joined the game. Haven't played with her in a while, so uh, I think they're on the other team, so I think things are probably going to get a really chaotic here right off the rip. A spray! <laughs> okay, so, uh, Nicholas and everybody else, while I've got you here, while I can talk to you, I wanted to talk about next week's content and streaming schedule. Basically, it's about to get complicated because I'm going to fly to Michigan and do Gamers for Giving. And what makes this complicated is I don't really have any videos ready, so it's pretty likely that there's going to be off days. Come on, come on! There we go. On top of this, okay, we're flipping spawn, so I'm going to go ahead and take this right here. The, the way the charity event is set up, it's really designed for Twitch. And Twitch bandwidth. YouTube gaming, like it, enjoy it a lot, you know, I stream here. But it just requires more bandwidth than Twitch does. So, I don't know if I'm going to have enough bandwidth to do full uh, 1080p. Good to see you there, I see you talking about hike. So I probably won't be able to do full 1080 60. I don't know, you guys can tell me. Would you rather me do 720p 60 frames per second? Or 1080p 30 frames per second? I can probably only do one or the other. Okay, this Weevil, I am, uh, I'm kind of struggling here on the Weevil today. I'm not doing a very good job Weeviling, folks. So would you rather see 720-60 or 1080-30? Because those are very likely to be the two that I'm going to have to choose from. Oh yeah, Haley's on my team. Derp, never mind. I got my teams backwards. <clears throat> Next up, uh, the way the event's set up, we have PCs. Most of the guys coming to stream for charity are PC streamers. That's fine. Not a whole lot of console guys. So I got a phone call and they're like, yeah, you need to bring whatever peripherals you want, including your console. So they're telling me I need to bring my PlayStation 4. Yeah, we all want 60 FPS. Most people are pretty... Okay, so yeah, most people want 720-60 here in the chat. That's what I'm seeing, so that's good. And I'm getting butchered. This this Weevil, I don't know. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, so, they're like, yeah, we need you need to bring your own PlayStation 4, all your cables, your own controllers. Also, you need to bring your own webcam. And by the way, um... We don't have Elgato HD60 Pros, we have the regular Elgato HD60s, so you need to reconfigure it with these computers and set up the baseline delay and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, great, so I have to do a charity screen stream with uh, the old Elgatos, which I'm really glad I'm not using anymore, I didn't really like the delay on them. I made it work, right, but it wasn't ideal. I have to bring my PlayStation 4, bring my own headsets, my own, uh, just about everything. I'm like, well that really blows. And like, yeah, or you could just do PC games, like, well, that would be okay, except I'm awful at PC games. Ugh, this is getting bad. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to step it up or we're gonna lose, and I know it. So, I, I decided that I don't want to bring my PlayStation 4. Yeah, I know it's for charity, but I don't want to have to take my PlayStation 4 through the airport and do all kinds of crazy stuff for it. And I do have a fairly complex setup here at home. Which I would have to undo and then redo when I get back, which is a big mess. I'm already going to have to take my own mouse and keyboard and all that kind of stuff. So the question then is, what PC games would you guys like to see me play? I can do a lot of- oh gosh, I need to get away from that. I can do a lot of PC games. Uh, oh yes! Oh, that's good gameplay right there! But, I'm not sure which ones, because, like, I can do Counter-Strike, but I'm not good at Counter-Strike. That's the issue. And the Cowboy says, just use a controller on PC. See, everybody says that, but what you're missing is that Black Ops 3 PC is full of, like, crazy tryhards. Most PC games are, which is fine. That's, like, kind of how the community works, and I'm fine by that. But if I go and I use a controller on PC, I'm just going to get butchered. I'm going to get slaughtered. So... Uh, Counter-Strike, Counter -Strike, I don't think I'm good enough to be entertaining. I thought about just sucking it up and trying to play Black Ops 3 PC, even though I'm not very good at it. I kind of would really love to do League of Legends. I would have a lot of fun just sitting down and streaming League of Legends for, I don't know how many hours for charity. We have DayZ, Dirty Bomb, Skyrim, Rocket League, yeah. All that kind of stuff. The issue is that... Um, League of Legends on my channel has just never even remotely drawn the same level of viewership that COD has. 
A lot of people tell you, and this is the same advice I give others, well, don't stream it just because the viewers are there, stream it because you like it. Unfortunately, when you're doing a charity stream, it's the exact other way around. If I'm doing a charity stream, what I want to do is get as many viewers as possible, regardless of how it is, because it's not about me, it's not about getting subs or views or money here on this channel. It's all about actually helping the charity. So, that gets a lot more complicated. The culling, yeah, I had, uh, I had some other people recommend the culling. That's a very good kill cam right there, too. So the culling is definitely what I'm thinking about. The cowboy says you can still do well with the controller. Hello, Slutzenberg. Nice to see you, man. Uh, Arc League H1Z1. I can do H1Z1. The culling was currently number one on my list. Um... I got two donations rolling in, so I'll answer those questions. Warpath1286 says, any tips for shotgun headshots? Uh, I'm going to recommend that you actually aim down sights because it tightens up your pellet spread like a lot. Makes it way, way tighter and easier to deal with. A lot more controllable even. Whoop. <laughs> That's a crazy fight. Yeah, what you definitely want to do is you want to um, aim down sights every single chance you get for the shotgun headshots. Uh, I don't even recommend, some people do, they really recommend the laser sight. I kind of don't. I don't think it's necessary. Just ADS, and most of the shotguns have a tight pellet spread, so that'll make everything a lot easier for you. That's exactly how I did it on my streams. And, uh... Do -do -do -do, scoots Magoots. What's he got to say? Oh my gosh. Oh, I got killed. Scoots Magoots says, sorry it's not $200 big. So shout out to that guy, by the way, dude, don't worry about it. He says, I hope your day is going good, glad you're back. And he says, my goal is, number one, learn how to fudging join you. And two, show you my emblem that I worked four hours on. I died while I wasn't paying attention here. Um, there is a couple of ways to join. You can do it through the Team Drift PlayStation community. Hmm. Yeah, you can join in through the Team Drift PlayStation community. You can join off people in-game. We got a new sponsor, uh, Nocturnal. Nocturnal, thank you for sponsoring the channel, man. I appreciate it. Big shout out to you. Hope you enjoy your uh, chat badge, your yin yang, and your green text. So thank you for sponsoring, man. Much appreciated. Yeah, so you can join either through Team Drift, which I've uh, heard some people are able to do and some people can't. You can directly search my username. I recently changed all of my privacy settings here on stream to make me much easier to join. And you can also join off of any of these other people in the game. The issue is that the game is quite often very full. Like, uh, as soon as... Well, I <laughs> shoot my teammates. As soon as one person leaves, the other one's gonna be joining in real shortly. Ah, oh, biscuits. Um, the Weevil was buffed recently, but according to Exclusive Ace, who's a fantastic source of information, he said that it wasn't buffed. So Vaughn says one thing, Ace says the other. I'm gonna trust Ace. He's my homie, I believe in him. Oh no, what's this? Uh, Zionium donated three dollars. Says, is it possible? If, if it, is it possible you could post a session to join on your YouTube community? Uh, thanks. Oh gosh. And keep up the good work. It is, that's how it's supposed to work. If you're in the community, you're supposed to be able to just view my name and join. Easy peasy. That's how it's supposed to work. But it's apparently not doing that thing that it's supposed to do. That's the whole reason I made the community. And, I don't know. People people find ways to join, so I think it's okay for now. I unfortunately can't stop to invite people because that gets to be chaotic, you know. Come on over here, challenge me, bitch. Oh no, you're behind me! Oh, come on! Woot, woot, woot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Um... It's kind of this thing of like when you're streaming, you want to keep the show going no matter what, right? So... Ah, oh, he's behind me. Oh man, we got a spud down here. He needs to watch spud to stud, but every team's got a few spuds. Whew. Jeff Fails, good to see you, man. Haven't seen you in a while. As you say, where's the charity event in Michigan? If it's in Grand Rapids area, any chance for a fan meetup? Uh, I think it's in Ann Arbor. It's like... Uh, it's at East Michigan University, I think, which is out there by Detroit by Detroit. So I'm pretty much going to be in the Detroit area for this charity event uh, and at the college over there. I don't know exactly... Uh, it's like East Michigan University Communications Center or something like that. That's where I'm going to be at. 
Never been to Detroit before. I've seen pictures and videos of it. It looks kind of like Fallout in New Vegas. Actually, it looks a little bit more like Fallout 3. But uh, hopefully it's going to be a fun event. <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was my bad aiming that got me killed right there. Uh, that's bad. Yeah, we're getting we're getting raffle stomped right here. <laughs> These people on the other team are are touching my booty right now. I'm gonna have to try to turn this around. If we have Bravo, we can grab Charlie and then just hold Bravo. I'll be very happy. So I'm just gonna run straight to Bravo and try and hold it because I know that my teammates won't be able to do that forever. Not even bagging them. I couldn't hold it forever, you know. Oh, come on, come on. That's bad. See, that's what I didn't want because I know they're gonna be over there at Bravo again. I gotta run over here like a goober and try and challenge. I just love wall running in this game. It feels so rewarding. Except when you get shut down like that. Like, you wouldn't even think to look for people that high up, but this guy's got it going on. Yeah, I don't currently plan to do a meetup. I'm gonna be... I have very limited time, right? Like, I'm just not gonna be able to be taking time off from the charity stream to do a meetup. But the deal is, though, the charity stream is like a big LAN party style event. So, you're all actually welcome to come to the event where I'm at. It's going to be me and a bunch of Optic people and uh, some other, like a bunch of streamers and stuff, some Counter-Strike pros. And the idea is you can all come and join in. Like, you can actually play in the tournament against me if you want to do that. Like, if you can come to, just look up, like, Gamers for Giving and you'll find it. And I'm getting some really kind of sketchy lag here. Got a lot of donations coming in, too, that I don't think I have time to read all really fast. <clears throat> Let's see what we've got. <sighs> yeah, I have no idea how far Grand Rapids is away from Detroit. I'm very much so not familiar with the region, unfortunately. I didn't sign up for this shit. We need to fight smarter. Uh, Timon says, go vote in the straw poll. Straw poll me slash 700185. Uh, by the way, Drift, you're awesome and hi from the Netherlands. Thank you, Timon989. And I do plan to visit the Netherlands sometime. It looks like a very nice place. Never got an opportunity to go there. Definitely going to. Scoots my goots. Uh, says you have had problems joining through the community. Might have just had bad luck. Haha, -ha. anyway. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Still dark matter grinding. LMGs, ARs, and SMGs. To go. You have the you have all the hard stuff to go then. You've got like the the bulk of the thing to go. <laughs> yeah, such bad sinuses today. Yeah, I mean, you got a long, long way to go, sir. Wish it wasn't true for you, but it is. What do we got next on the list? Um... I might use my HBK-30 class. I like my HBK-30 rushing class. That one's kind of fun. Uh, that's maybe not the, maybe not on this map. Maybe I'll use the, the the ACOG site. Not the ACOG site. The recon site class I talked about. I might use that one instead. Definitely going to use something fun here on Hunted. Ziga Blaze says, Hey Drift, just wanted to update you on my channel progress. It's going well. Wanted to let you know because you're the reason I'm following my dream on YouTube. Thank you. It says, uh, do you like the new zombies map? Could you elaborate on the dinosaur idea for COD 2016? I certainly can. So, um, let me make sure my chat's doing okay. Uh, Archangel, I don't know why you can't find me on the community. It should be there. Like, it, I don't know. I just... <sighs> should be there. And Funky Lizard 69 has subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. Funky Lizard and Guy Gamer Live. Good to see you guys. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, I do like Der Eisendrach. I got Twisted Log. I got a lot of subs in here now. I like Der Eisendrach. Der Eisendrach. I don't know how to say this name. It's German. But I don't play zombies a lot. I'm not a big zombies fan. It's fun. It's more casual for me. I'm not like Noah. I'm not that deep into the zombies. It plays just fine as far as I'm concerned. But dinosaurs. That's what we need. We've been asking for we've been asking for dinosaurs ever since we started teasing the battlefield people. We were always like, "Yeah, well, Call of Duty has zombies. What do you have? Nothing." No, you can kind of mess with them like that. So I think it would be awesome. Whichever game gets dinosaurs first is just going to win. They're just going to be the winners. That's how that's going to happen. So I think we get COD dinosaurs, right? It starts off with like um, either you can do Jurassic Park style where you're cloning dinosaurs or I also very fun time machine where you travel back in time to the dinosaur period 
There we go. We got that conservative gameplay going on. I see some people over here at Bravo. Throw a stun. Ah. Okay. And they're behind me in my spawn where they ought not be, but that's where they are today. So let's see if I can kick them out of my spawn. ACOG's really not as great up close, but I can make it work because of the new sensitivities and stuff. Uh, see, the same guy. Salik boy. Nobody knocks him out of the building and they get surprised while we can't clean people off of B. What's Jessica's channel? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Designs. She streams on Twitch for the most part. Okay, so your base dinosaurs, your little ones, are going to be like compies, right? Like those little bitty ones that aren't actually that big of a threat. Moving on from that, we're going to have raptors that you can fight. Raptors are going to be like your mid-level enemies that they can just kind of come in. Mm. Okay, so now we gotta hide. I really hate being pinned over here like this, but it's the only way for me to do it. Come on, team, I need some help. They can't have a bunch of goose eggs down there at the bottom. Goose eggs at the bottom are no good. Don't like goose eggs. Ugh! Don't like it when they're coming for my spawn over here, either. Yep, I'm going to go help out on Bravo, but we're all going to die. Probably to the same person over there. Yep. Still a bunch of goose eggs. Ugh. Stressful. Here we go. Okay, so there's nothing I can do when we've all got UAVs and stuff and everything's screwed up. But I'm going to try to fight it out. So you're like your raptors are your like your your medium level enemy, but they also do some cool stuff like the raptors will come in and flank you whereas the other ones really won't. I can't see this person. There we go. It's easier to see people from under the water actually. <laughs> and I'm getting cut down by these BMPs today even though they got nerfed. BMPs just are annoying. Okay, dude, I'm going to help you over here on Bravo. No, nope. oh, I picked the wrong time to throw a grenade. Trying my absolute best to cap these objectives right now because I want to win this game. Go away, Imeka. Dude, dude, what? Oh, that's awful. That's awful. There we go. This game is getting a lot sweatier, ladies and gentlemen. A lot sweatier. Hey, Randy, don't worry. Don't take Charlie. We don't need it. You just go out there and die. Still got a goose egg at the bottom. Mm, mm, mm. I know that's a sub, so I'm trying not to talk trash, but that's that's rough when you have goose eggs. Yeah, so you get raptors going on. Then you can have, like, your bosses will be like stegosauruses. Then your big bosses will be like T-Rex. And since we have swimming and cod now... I'm assuming we'll have that in whatever Infinity Ward's got going on. Then we can do some cool stuff like you go in there and there's a Leo Pleuridon or a Plesiosaur like the Loch Ness Monster. And imagine how dope it would be to swim in the water with a spear gun and hunt the Loch Ness Monster Call of Duty style. You could like quickscope Nessie. I think that would be super duper fun. Would it be like tactical or whatever? No. Would it be realistic COD? No, of course not. But it would be fun. And fun goes a long way. I think that would be the awesome thing to do. It'd be cool if you could kind of like, you know how you have vehicles in COD? How you could like, imagine if you could ride a Stegosaurus or ride a Brontosaurus. My team is just getting stamped. Like, I have no protection and some people have quit playing. So I'm definitely on the dick end of this right here. It's really difficult to get this going on. Can't even hold the spawn. Let's see if I can use this to get Bravo. Nope. Oh, what a rough team. I got two. Oh, man. Captain Produce is in the game. Mm mm mm. I'm trying, guys. I'll see if I can turn it around. I'm going to give it a. I'm going to give it a best effort. Well, no, I think that could be really dope. Imagine if, like, instead of having traps, you could have poisonous plants. You can have those giant insects. You can have every single dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Like, you remember those ones with the really hard heads that would, like, ram people? I remember in, I think it was Jurassic Park, The Lost World, like, they rammed a car. 
and it, like busted out the car door and sent the like driver out the other side. Imagine if you had those and they had different AI, like that was like a really simple, uh, not zombie, but dinosaur that would pretty much just go straight forward. And I want nothing to do with that gun right there. I don't even have time to reload over here, so I'm just going to make do with what I can. Come on, come on! This is awful. Okay, well, I got to I cap Bravo. I think the most important thing to do is hold Bravo. There we go. We can take back one of these other points, but we can't get Bravo back. Come on. That's bad. Okay, got to get my boost back. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. Team, please! Please, senpais! Do that just fine. That's not an issue. I'm gonna have to use my specialist ability just to shoot this crap down. Well, that's awful. Haters are no good. <sighs> trying guys, trying, trying, trying. You can't can't just give up. A lot of people would have already quit in this game. That's no good. Quitters definitely never win. You never win anything when you quit. I like capturing here because I'm usually just a little bit too close to the edge for them to look down and shoot me. At least not easily. They have to stop for a second to try and find me. Did I hear mothership? Oh, crap. Okay, this is getting broken at a, at a bit here. My guys are getting slaughtered too bad. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's change classes real quick. Where's the hostile UAV, huh? Where's it at? Don't see it? Too bad. Alright. Whew. Got a donation from Belgian the best. Not able to read it at the moment. I'm trying to kill all this other stuff. Sorry to bust your bubble, but the BF4 has a Megalodon Shark. Yes, I am aware of the Battlefield 4 Megalodon. Mm. <sighs> Black Ops 3 can be rough sometimes. When the enemy team gets those killstreaks rolling, especially the hater, there's a very limited set of things you can do about it. You're gonna come through here, I bet. Then right here. Yeah, too slow, too slow. What do you say about the Megalodon? Yep, Battlefield 4 has a Megalodon shark, which is a dinosaur. Familiar with that. By the way, a few streams back, you said you wanted to do Battlefield 4, but the Battlefield community isn't nice. I hope it was not level cap because he seems like a nice guy. No, it wasn't YouTubers. Um, it was back in the day I did Battlefield 3 in depth. And what happened, what ended up happening is I was trying to give tips on Battlefield. I was relatively new at Battlefield. Basic, basically a Battlefield noob. But I did know how to use Simthic, I did know how to get stats, and I did know how to test stuff. So I could tell you which guns had the best DPS, which ones were the most accurate. And I was kind of doing in-depth on Battlefield, but without as much experience as I had on COD. And um, people just, they just crapped all over me. They, uh, I mean, it took like three times as long to make, and uh, it didn't get as many views and stuff, and people were just kind of like, uh, 
you you're only a blah 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 level what do you know i've been playing battlefield since 1943 you didn't even play battlefield vietnam so your opinion doesn't matter Ugh! look at this cod faggot giving battlefield tips Ugh! he plays on console how garbage and some stuff like that and it was really really toxic <clears throat> so that was really frustrating to see that in the comments and then it got worse because <clears throat> I started getting private messages on YouTube. People started PMing me, and uh, the messages would be well-written and not inherently toxic, but they would say stuff like, you know, Drifter, I really like what you do for COD, and, you know, the, the, it's like, your videos are really good, but I want you to stop making them because I don't want COD players to know Battlefield exists. I don't want these COD idiots to come over to our game and ruin it so could you please not do that and somebody else would be like please stop making battlefield videos we don't want this game to grow we want our game just for us we don't want any casuals or cod players in our game it's like please stop telling cod players that battlefield is a good alternative and i didn't do just a few i got like 100 200 of these messages in a short period of time and along with the negative comments and stuff and i just decided all right if you guys want to be that elitist to keep people from playing your game and to hate on my tips because I don't have the highest level, then you guys can keep your damn game and I'm not going to play it. That's how that was. Scoots Magoots donated three, uh, $3 says, Kind of glad I can't join yet. Bad luck drift, but good for staying in the game. And yesterday I bought my scuff and now you can give some away. Luck isn't on either of our sides. Well, that doesn't inherently mean that you were going to win one. I mean, it's still kind of lottery style. Don't worry, Scuff agreed for the same thing. Uh, Scuff was like, you can't give too many away, because that'll give people a disincentive to buy, and they're all about buying the things. So I think I'm going to get like one or two Scuffs to give away per quarter, and then probably a significant uh, higher number of like accessories, or... Uh, I can't 2v1 with no backup. Uh, you know, some Scuff accessories. They were going to give away hoodies, player packs, mod kits... Um, older scuffs, stuff like that. They don't want to give away the expensive ones. Scuff are always pretty tight on their controllers. That's just, that's just how that company works. There we go. That works. I'll make sure it's clear up here. And there we go. This is what I'm talking about with this HBK class. If you can use the hip fire on it, you can do some good work. Look at this. Look at this. Fast reaction. Fast reaction. Let's get out of here. Okay, they're all basically going to be out here somewhere. Whoa, whoa. There we go. Got an assist at least. Come on, I gotta stop Bravo. There we go, got it. I'm just taking a guess that they're gonna rush me over there. Did he see me? Yep, he did. <laughs> Oh, this has... Why did I pick up the same gun but with no ammo? Oh, okay, good. We got an ammo share. Come on, guys. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. <laughs> we got a new sponsor, Easy Outlaw. Thank you for sponsoring the channel, man. I appreciate it. Always appreciate new sponsors here. And a new donator. Ah, Talon got him, but unfortunately I couldn't cap the objective. I'm gonna go over there into Charlie. Got a donation from Hassam. I appreciate that, man. Look at the hipfire works on this gun. This works. This is what I'm talking about. I wanted to do a little bit more theory crafting. Like, I found a class that I love. I can do really good work with this class right here. Downside is I can't shoot down their annoying UAVs and stuff, but I can do everything else very, very well. Um... Easy Outlaw, man. Thanks for subbing. I see your comment right there. Glad to see that you could catch the stream live. That's one of the benefits of doing it early. So we got some people coming in from the UK. And just because you said cheers, I'm assuming that means you're from the UK. There we go. I'm so good at wall running. <laughs> if this game was only about wall running, I think I'd be really good at it. Unfortunately, it's got other stuff. Oh, no! No, 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 Captain Produce. You so dirty. That's wrong. You embarrassing me on stream here, man. I know this guy. This is one of J-Hub's subs. 
Likes to come in and rock that J-Hub tag on me. Mm. Securing Charlie. Losing Alpha, securing Charlie. Charlie secure. Please don't go in slow. Uh, Galactic Banana, thank you for sponsoring the channel, L. And, uh, yeah, the gun's good, but it doesn't beat point-blank shotguns. Thank you for sponsoring Galactic Banana. I hope you enjoy your new badge, the subscriber emote, and the text and everything. And I'm getting smacked by Young Thug. A lot of subs on the other team. Um, having some issues now. They're kind of putting us on lockdown. Things are getting a little bit more complicated at the moment. There we go. There we go. Uh, Puffilio donated as well. I'll read yours right after I get to Hassam's. I'll probably try to do it in between rounds here because it's getting a little bit hectic in this game. Securing a. Which side are you going to watch, mate? But I got a galactic banana. Sounds more dangerous than a regular banana to me. I have issues with regular- what? Oh, no way. Nobody even uses that online anymore. I bet they're going to take Alpha back in like a split second. I bet while we're getting Charlie, they're going to get Alpha. Okay, well, that's not exactly how I had that uh, engagement planned out in my head. And it looks like I'm going back to Alpha again. Ah, uh, Young Thug! Young Thug doing some work. Alright, alright. Starting to struggle a little bit here. He's doing real good in the- Come on, I just spawned at Charlie. Come on, alright. Let's get these uh, donations going. Let's see what people are saying. <laughs> Hosam says, you missed a donation from me earlier? I did? Holy crap, yes I did. I'm sorry, man. i very sorry. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes I'm not paying attention. I- Apologize. Sorry for having you donate twice. Please forgive. I didn't mean to do that. Um, Hosam donated $15. Very big donation. Thank you. Sorry that I missed that one. It says, Hey Drifter, love the streams. What's your opinion on specialist abilities having no counter? I wish there was a perk that would hide you from vision pulse or tack mask to protect you from heat wave or something. I kind of agree that these should have some kind of counter built into them. But I think the idea at Treyarch is that they're like, they're like aces in the hole. They're supposed to be so powerful that they're not counterable, which I think I talked about this in like one of my oldest uh, reviews of Black Ops 3, is that I felt that it was wrong to not have a counter to these items. They just felt incredibly strong to me. Hey, gotta get the guy off the point. My team is just getting crushed over here. Look at all this. Ugh. I like how the guy wrecks me last round, and now that he's on my team, it's underperformance city. But that's okay. I'm going to keep fighting it out. I'm going to earn my lumps here today. You know, you would you would think that Tack Mask would affect Heat Wave, or that Cold Blooded or Blind Eye or something would affect the stupid Vision Pulse, but uh, all the game devs seem to have think that to disagree. And now, we, now they've got a Hostile Hater, we've got UAV, Counter UAV, and we're pending our spawn. So everything's about to go tits up and downhill. They are very strong. The ones I think that bother me the most are the insta-gib ones. Kind of, I mean, like the one I'm using right now with the bow and arrow. But, what? Oh, that's the stupid airplane. Okay, I don't have anti-air on this class. I think, uh, dude, if I keep playing, I'm just going to have to run anti-air only, I guess. Because it's getting bad. Yeah, I'm gonna have to swap to anti-air because nobody else is gonna do it. Um, where's my here's my anti-air class? This is so not fun. Now there should be counters. There should be. I think their idea of counter is like a visual or audio cue that allows you to kind of dodge it. Like, you can hear some of these charging, like Ruin going, Aah! and then you know something's up. I don't see a damn thing in the air. That's This map's kind of sucky for that. Just gonna have to deal with it. I don't think that's a really good idea of a counter. Why are you shooting at me? That's drawing more attention! I'm getting trolled. Okay. Gonna keep my uh, temperaments down. There we go. 
I'm gonna cancel your care package, punks. Whew. Let's go back to the class that I wanted to be using. And I spawn! Look at this! I just, like, pop up. Damn it. It's getting tough here today. Whew. Yeah, I kind of wish that there were counters to some of these, or some of them being not as insta-kill as they are, but... I guess they maybe wouldn't be fun if they weren't as insta-kill as they are. Kind of wish I had fast max on this gun, but... I'll make do with what I got, and I'm getting beaten down. Ouch. Oof, okay. Getting frustrating. <clears throat> okay, gotta keep it together. Can't get grumpy here on stream. Uh, Rex has something to say, which I'll probably read at the end of this game. I'll catch up on donations at the end of the game. I'm gonna go back to the chat here. This will be the second game in a row that I've got some... I want to blame it on my teammates, but instead of doing that, I'm going to try to blame things on myself. I'm going to say that there are things that I could have done better. I could have performed... And my guy is shooting me! Stop fucking shooting me! It draws too much... That's... If you join on stream, please don't do that. Please don't follow me around and just shoot me. That annoys the ever-living devil out of me. I don't really like it when people do that. Okay, now that I've got my frustration out of the way... Got some people saying that I want to play League of Legends. Yeah, I might do that for the charity stream. I'm just afraid that not many people will watch. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about bringing my wife's PlayStation 4 or buying a new PlayStation 4 while I'm there. And, uh... Hmm. Tough. Okay. <sighs> that was a rough game. So, let's go back to this. Uh, Rex244 says, Keep doing what you love and don't let anyone tell you different. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, and if they don't like it, but uh, buy their own damn server. Your videos have continued to help me as a multi-platform gamer, and, I, and for that, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, but you're talking about Battlefield buying their own damn server. Yeah, it kind of, the Battlefield in depth just, it kind of burned me, and I kind of got to not liking it. I thought about bringing it back for Battlefield 4 instead of Battlefield 3, but Battlefield 4 was so incredibly, Boomy's still over here, so incredibly buggy that it just, it wasn't, it had so many bugs, it just wasn't fun. I couldn't even play it on console at launch. It was just broken on console, totally broken. Whew, what are we going to do in this next map? I don't know, I'm probably going to play Aquarium because it's a little bit less chaotic. Yeah, so I tried that. I had some fun with J-Hub. We did some goofing off and stuff, but it didn't really resonate very well. But thank you for the support, Rex. I appreciate And I'm going to keep doing what I love. I love streaming. For me, streaming is very fun, so I'm going to keep doing that. Young Thug. His name is Thug. Okay. We got uh, Pepe Uh I urge you to accept me as your ruler. It's a nice crab we've got. I like, the, I like looking at people's icons. Yeah, there's a J-Hub fan. It's an Eagle. Havoc, unusual map. Uh, Easy Outlaw says, any tips on glitch double kills? I'm trying for C4 doubles. Now, you can't do the C4 thing to get double kills. Um, to get double kills, what you need to do is you need to use something like the Vesper, the Weevil, a... I actually think that the, the Haymaker is really good, and you want to run past them, then glitch back behind them, and just spray like crazy with the Haymaker. Just be very annoying and just hose people with it. I think that works very, very well, and that's what I would recommend uh, for those particular uh, challenges. And Superman LB donated $20. That's a big donation, sir. What class have I not yet used? I'm going to snipe a little bit. It's not <clears throat> Says, uh, love the HVK class setup. Uh, one question. Do you also think added rapid fire to the class helps? I built a similar class, but with rapid fire, and it seemed to melt people. Pl placebo effect are really helping. I think it's a little bit more placebo. Because, you know, rapid fire only makes your gun shoot just a little bit faster in this game. It's not nearly as effective as it used to be. So, unfortunately, I don't think it's that good of an attachment. Yes, it's better than nothing. Uh, you know, it doesn't just do nothing. It does stuff, right? But, and we're camping. I like how we're already camping. All right, that's my fault for rushing. 
Um, it does do good work. It can do good work. I think you'd be better off with almost anything else. But hey, it's your class, and if you like it, then go for it. Come on. Let's see what I can do here. I'm probably going to end up super dead. Nope, yep, that's super dead. Thank you for sponsoring Brandon DeZeba. I appreciate it, Brandon. Welcome to Team Drift. I hope you enjoy your sub emote badge and all that kind of cool stuff. We have green text down there in the chat from time to time as well. I'm trying to find somebody. Ah, missed my opportunity to pop them. There we go. Okay, teammates mop that up. There we go. Oh, okay. Captain Produce is going to close range snipe me, that biscuit eater. All right, that's cool. I got something for you, Captain Produce. I know what you're up to. I know how you played this game, boy. And there's people up here, too. They're always up there. I'm going to try to help this guy on Bravo. I'm going to be the meat shield. I'm going to be the distracted. They're going to kill me, probably, but he'll get Bravo just fine. There we go. There we go. Oh, yep. Yeah. See, this gun does good work. I like this one, too. There's another dude here. Come on. Ah, I couldn't spin around fast enough to see him. Brandon DeZeba, man. Oh, yeah, I need to turn the dog cam off. Derp. Boop. Beep. Bop. Dog cam is off. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Left the dogs on. Uh, DJVX Shadows. Nice to see you there in the chat. Haven't seen you in a while. I'm the only person on my team to earn a UAV, which is a little bit concerning. Thank you for boosting over here loudly beside me. There's another guy right down here below me. Are they actually out here? Nope. Okay. They're going to be coming up beside us soon. Uh-oh. What do we got? I had to figure out which body was the real one. I can just kind of sit right here and... Oh, no! I... Mmm... Mm -mm. I saw that. I saw that kinetic armor, and I was like, I should wait. Maybe if I don't move, they won't see me. They won't see me if I don't move. And then pop, you're dead. Mm. Captain Produce is going to shotgun me this whole game. I know that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, take a break. If at first you don't succeed, take a break. <laughs> What's Pofilio got to say? Uh, oh, damn, Pofilio, did I miss your donation too? I think I did. Yes, I did. Oh my god, I have screwed up so bad today. Pofilio says, Hello from Germany. Thank you for the early stream. Just a random question. What is your favorite and least favorite movie genre and why? Um, my fa- oh my god, that was Captain Produce. I could have meleeed him. I think that my most favorite movie genre is probably going to be sci-fi or maybe horror. I'm a big sucker for sci-fi movies, especially really like cerebral, smart, smart, you know, artsy fartsy kind of movies. I really enjoyed watching, what was that movie recently? Uh, Ex Machina. Movies like Ex Machina I thoroughly enjoyed. I also enjoyed watching uh, It Follows. I thought that was a really good movie. Lots of good movies like that. I think we're about to swap here. I can see you out here being a biscuit eater. <laughs> yeah, he had the much easier one to use, but that's alright. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take your shotgun too. Let's get on this Bravo. Let's all get some easy points, guys. Let's all go up here, too, because I know there's going to be dudes up here. <laughs> you, you biscuit lover. So, yeah, I really like sci-fi movies. I do have a soft spot for horror movies. Anything that's just a little bit out there. Um, action and wacky, I can kind of do, like, slapstick stuff. Really like that kind of stuff, too. Uh, have a lot of fun. <laughs> Nico Bellic, yes, your senpai has noticed you. Uh, yeah, movies with a little bit of philosophy go a long way. I'm kind of a sucker for independent movies, too. I'd like offbeat stuff. I don't like generic. Generic gets kind of boring for me. Least favorite movie genre? Um, my least favorite movie genre... 
Okay, you wanted the favorite movie as well. Okay, so my favorite movie of all time is probably... I'm probably going to say Kill Bill. I really thoroughly enjoyed watching Kill Bill. Thought it was a fantastic movie or series of movies, however you want to call it. Um, really enjoyed it. Mm, wasn't able to pull out my pistol and swap around. I think Kill Bill's a fantastic movie. I like a lot of Tarantino movies. Pulp Fiction's very good. Um, I think the movie Aliens is excellent. Terminator 2 is an excellent movie. Ex Machina is an excellent movie. There's a lot of very good movies that have come out recently. Uh, the new Star Wars movie was fantastic as well. Let's see. Least favorite genre is going to be probably either religious or romantic comedy. The, the sort of religious propaganda movies like Heaven is Real or uh, Passion of the Christ was actually a very interesting one because of the historical accuracy, so that's not what I'm talking about. But like uh, the movies like God's Not Dead, Heaven is Real, uh, I think they had some weird one where it was like called The Last Ounce of Courage about like a former Marine fighting the ACLU because they tried to ban God or something kind of dumb like that. Um, those kind of movies I don't enjoy. I just find them to be a little bit too too dumb and propaganda-y. I don't enjoy romantic comedies because they all tend to just kind of follow the same boring pattern. They're very predictable, very repetitive, and that sort of stuff. So, not to saying that romantic comedies are inherently bad or that there aren't some good ones or that a romance movie isn't good because there are definitely good ones. Uh, but a lot of times they're just formulaic and boring to me. And thank God my wife thinks so as well. She thinks they're very boring. So, that's, uh, that's a big relief for me. <clears throat> uh, least favorite movie of all time is going to be Actinus Maximus, War of the Alien Dinosaurs. It was a god-awful, terrible movie. It was so bad, like, it wasn't even funny. It wasn't like Birdemic, right? Birdemic was bad, but it was funny. This one was just awful. Actinus Maximus, War of the Alien Dinosaurs was some of the worst dog poop I have ever seen in my entire life. I couldn't stomach it. It was so bad. <laughs> Captain Produce using your stupid <laughs> silent shotgun on me. Oh, it's, it's funny. This guy just likes to mess with me on stream. Let's see, what was another really bad movie? Um, hmm, trying to think of a movie that was just plain bad. Uh, uh, Ultraviolet was really bad. That was a really bad movie. <sighs> I try not to watch too many movies that I just know are going to be bad. There's some bad ones on Netflix, too. There's, like, a lot of, like, independent movies on Netflix that look like they could be cool. Like, they kind of have this cool plot, and they've got all this potential. And then once they get going, they're just awful. A lot of stuff like that on Netflix. Uh, there's some awful ones, like, uh, I watched Z Nation which is in a lot of ways a really awful TV show, but it's really charming. It's fun to watch. It's silly, it's entertaining, all that kind of stuff. So, oof, I'm getting killed here. Okay. Now let's see if I can catch back up. We want story time. Uh, ba -ba -ba Tom donated $3, says, uh, you're the best, thank you for helping me with my depression. How would you say is the best way to stay happy? Keep up the amazing work, you make my day better. Uh, the best. So I don't think there's a guaranteed best way to stay happy because everybody's got a different source of happiness. Some people are motivated by success. Some people are motivated by uh, sex, honestly. They like having a really hot girlfriend or boyfriend. Some people, some people value their family. Some people value their kids. Some people like uh, being famous. There's a lot of different things going on for six, for just that. Those are the things that a lot of people would say are successful, or in, typically success, however you measure it, is what causes happiness. Some people enjoy time off. Some people enjoy being lazy. Every person is different. Everybody has something that they value. Most often, based on something that happened in childhood or whatever they're lacking right now. So there's no one-size-fits-all cure. Uh, thank you, Bilal Khan, for subscribing. I appreciate it. There's no one-size-fits-all for happiness or depression. But there's also some other things to consider, such as... Why are we always trying to be happy? This idea that our whole life is about pursuing happiness is actually a relatively new one, and it's a philosophical one as well. Not until, I think, 
the 17th or 18th century did the idea even come into existence that our life was about pursuing happiness, so to speak. Previously, it was about maintaining family, status, all this kind of stuff, and being whether you were happy or not wasn't really a factor in most people's decision making. But now we've got these other philosophies that encourage us to be happy all the time. Be happy. It's about maximizing your happiness or, you know, you only live on this planet for so long, so you have to be happy. You have to be happy, happy, joy, joy, happy. And you, you end up in all these sort of weird optimizing decisions like, what's going to make me the happiest? And you make your choice and then you end up later regretting your choice if it didn't make you the happiest because you've wasted your time, you've wasted your life, or you second guess yourself. You have, um, what is it, consumer dissonance or whatever, consumer regret. You've, this choice isn't making me as happy as it should. Uh, this isn't the best thing. It makes us paradoxically wasteful, overly insightful, and other things. So sometimes you just have to accept that life isn't always about inherently being happy all the time. Why did the universe exists just to tickle the pleasure centers in our brain, that's not necessarily the reason for everything. So I think that understanding that, you know, paradox can help you become happier or more fulfilled or a lot of different things to realize that we're not always supposed to be happy, right? That, I don't know, just something to think about. I could have articulated myself better, but I hope it makes sense. And uh, Scoots Magoot says, not sure if I didn't just switch back to stream fast enough to see you read it. Uh, but can I add getting missed by Drifter on my list of achievements? I suppose you can. It's a very good question, though. Um, Nova Presma. I don't really read Marvel or DC. I read a little bit of Hellblazer, so that's Constantine. I'm really more of an Image Comics guy. You see most of my comics back here behind me. I read Image most of the time. Thoughts on Evolution? Evolution is a pretty well understood scientific phenomena that is very real and is not just a theory and is not made up and dinosaur bones aren't made of plaster and you know dumb stuff like that um if you believe in adaptation then i don't see why you can't believe in evolution other than the fact that you might not want to admit that the earth is greater than six thousand years old which is actually a relatively new concept not that god created everything that's very old but the precise six thousand years thing is actually somewhat new Whoop. Ugh, i failed sally boy got me yeah so i think it was uh middle ages roundabouts then that one of our popes, or maybe it was a monk, somebody, they did they did the analysis and determined, I know that I can't get on that flag right now, I just know that I can't. So I'm trying to clean some people out, and now I get on the flag. <clears throat> right, like, up until like the 1400s or so, nobody had any idea how old the earth was. There was no such thing as young earth creationism that's that's a very very new phenomenon not that people thought the earth was millions of years old or that they didn't believe in god or anything like that but they didn't have like a set number so nowadays what you get is uh this sort of pushback any theory that says the earth is over a certain years old you get an almost immediate pushback from the religious community or the really hardline religious community and what else is there about evolution that's interesting? I don't know. I, I, do, I did, you know, science in college, so all of this becomes very natural to me. But if our scientific education in the country is somewhat lacking, then people don't necessarily have the skills to properly, critically evaluate this. I've had people tell me, well, what is a proper critical evaluation? If I read the facts and I don't understand them or I don't feel that they're correct, how is that any more or less valid than uh, reading the Bible? And the difference is usually going to be in numerical or scientific literacy, understanding of the scientific method, which isn't always taught. The scientific method, and people demonize science as well. They're like, science is evil. All these scientists just try to get us to think this and that. And like, I don't think you understand that scientists aren't like this big cabal. It's not like you, you get your degree and then there's an initiation ceremony. They give you the white lab coat. They make you uh, hail Satan and swear that you believe in evolution. And you join this big Illuminati-like club where you work to kill God for... It's like, yeah, we scientists, we've proved that God is real. But we're a bunch of assholes. We hate God, so we're going to work really hard to confuse everybody else. Yeah, let's go to hell. That's awesome. No, that's, that's stupid. Nobody would do that. Especially people that are training to be the most logical on the planet, right? Why would we do that? Why would anybody do that? 
Also, they don't agree with each other. They're like, why do scientists agree on all these things? They don't. They argue all the time. They've got disagreements and different, opi different opinions and stuff like that. But when you have people that inherently disagree with each other so vehemently about such small things, all agree that one big thing is real or factual or something, that's... You oh no, I'm an idiot. That's a good indicator that something important is going on. <laughs> Hello, Matt and Christy Martinez. Uh, if you like comic books, which ones are your favorites? Okay, so I do like... I'm getting smacked here. I'll we'll change the subject, I know I'm gonna get off. Uh, Christy wants to know what comic books I like. I really enjoy reading East of West. Most of these are gonna be image comics. I enjoyed the, the Walking Dead. I'm a little bit more on the TV show side of things now. That's a little weird seeing Rick with no hands. Or missing a hand. I strongly... I think one of my favorite series right now is going to be Saga. Saga is just plain fantastic. I think Bedlam got cancelled, which was unfortunate. I was reading Zero, but that one got weird and actually ended early, which was also unfortunate. I'm reading Rat Queens at the moment. Uh, Rat Queens I didn't think I would like because it's kind of like this all-female D&D type thing, but it turned out to be a lot more fun than I thought it would be. So yeah, reading Rat Queens. Uh, what else are we reading? I'm reading Sex Criminals, actually. Sex Criminals Volume 1, I really didn't like. It was okay, but it wasn't, like, good for me. But then I I decided to man up and I'll give Volume 2 a try because it wasn't exactly bad. And what the hell's going on in here? Volume 2 for Sex Criminals was significantly better. I'm reading Hellblazer, which is John Constantine. Uh, that's that's very different. I like all the religious references in it because, you know, I'll probably come off very anti-religious on stream. But I actually do have a very strong religious education and background. So, and the people that write that are very good. Some other fantastic comic book series that I have read previously in the past is uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Absolutely excellent comic book series. Sandman is probably my favorite comic book series of all time, even more so than The Watchmen. If you ever get a chance to read Sandman, that is going to be the way to go. Sandman is beautiful, well-written, uh, articulate. It varies between artsy and that the actual art is good, and artsy and that the writing and the prose is good. Because Neil Gaiman's like a proper, you know, author writer. He writes, you know, poems and stuff on occasion. Actually, you can buy his poetry books. So, seeing somebody that is a proper lyricist write a comic book is very interesting. And he also studies a lot of religious and mythological things. So you see thousands of references to ancient mythologies and gods and really cool stuff like that. Watchmen's very good. Um, I've read a lot of different comic books, so... <clears throat> yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. Favorite anime? Uh, yeah, anime is good. Anime is a mixed bag. It's whatever. <laughs> but now we can go back and talk about the, re the evolution stuff more. And a lot of the, sometimes the reason people don't go for that is that they shut down pretty hard when you're trying to upend their worldview, because... Basically, the worldview of a person like this, and I was on this train for a long time, so I think I understand it pretty well, is that God created the universe, and the universe is all kind of like a big, you know, battle for our souls, and it's really, uh, it's a complicated matter, and their whole world is built around Christian mythology, angels, demons, all that sort of stuff, and they're taught that you accept the Bible as the whole truth, uh, and nothing but the truth, and that you can't have partial fallibility and stuff, and that all of the Bible is real, there's no... There's no missing segments, there's no interpreting this and that, you take it all or you leave it all. Well, then comes this science that comes around and says, well, this one very specific part of the Bible is not correct. It's one of the few parts that have anything to do that would be remotely testable and not just like a moral lesson or historical or something. I'm getting shotgunned out my booty. So then people are kind of put in this choice to believe the science around them, the stuff that creates electricity or, you know, the histories or just whatever, or reject the Bible, which they've been taught as the infallible truth since youth, and in doing so, damn themselves to hell for all eternity. And not only that, maybe not even going to hell, but it just upends their entire worldview. Every single thing that they've ever been taught to believe now has to be reevaluated, And that's a scary thing. So the ego has a tendency to self-protect people, um, and it likes to protect people from hurtful thoughts as well, which is a bit odd, but that's how it works. And it just like, no, it's like you should just reject science, that's so much easier. And there's issues with people not understanding the math behind it, because the big concept behind evolution, small changes over time will eventually look like a big change. It's about like playing the password game, where a little kid, like where you pass on a message from kid to kid, and then at the end it just looks totally different, right? But then... 
when you talk about genetic mutation, alleles, uh, this trait, that trait, and then especially it gets confusing because we're actually taught this to make to help it make sense to little kids. We're taught evolution like it's got a plan, like it's uh, like like evolution knows where we're going, and that you see it in sci-fi movies. Like I'm going to take this serum and I'm going to become a more evolved human, and they just radically change to. I don't have big heads and be smarter because we think that's where we're evolving to and you know nonsense like that or that um, we are adapted to our environment because we evolved to fit the environment or whatever um, these are all more or less true that we do adapt to fit the environment we evolve to survive better and do things like this but at the end of the day evolution isn't necessarily about fitting the environment perfectly it's about who has sex and who has sex more who passes their genes on down the fastest the bestest whatever now when it comes to animals with very short lifespans and very hostile environments oh yeah mad hops of course hoops of course i believe in evolution you take like bacteria rodents animals that you know really die from natural causes if you die from natural causes Guess what? You don't have sex, you don't reproduce, your genes go nowhere. So having a slight advantage means you get to bang more. Whereas for humans and some other animals, that might not be the case. And sometimes you can selectively, like, evolutionarily, like, breed yourself into extinction. Some animals have uh, unusual mating habits or sex habits that when you change the environment slightly, then they can't breed. They can't... <laughs> <laughs> they 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 overbreed, they underbreed, they their mating habits get all kinds of screwed up and they go extinct or they almost do and it it can be a hindrance. It's very unusual. They talk about de-evolving humans. If we had like a huge crisis and the whole world ended and we went back to hunter gatherers, uh, breeding for things like weak chins like what I have or intelligence might not necessarily be the best uh, breeding characteristics. So those people might not survive. Whereas then you know more brutish larger neanderthal types would and that would be what slowly starts to take over a little more it's very very interesting stuff i think and i just don't worry about this too much i don't know i don't really sit there and worry every day about like the evil cabal of scientists taking over the world and all that sort of stuff let's see how long are we streaming for today i don't know man I really don't know. I missed some donations coming in. I'll probably change up my classes in a little bit. I'll turn the dog cam back on. He's still over here. Being a sleepy dog. There we go. Sleepy dog dog cam. <laughs> Being a cute boy. They're done. Cool whip around 30 seconds. What are you talking about? Cool whip. Cool whip? I don't know. Uh, uh, Iran, O2 once uh, donated three dollars. Says, "Hey, Drift, huge fan from Iran, Tehran. Good to see. You. I think you're the first donator person commenting from Iran." Says, "I'm pretty big here." Oh man, that's that's good to know. Um, yes, we have internet, which is around 10 to 15 megabits. I know you do. I do know a lot about Iran. I appreciate your work, Drift. Keep it up. I'm wondering, what is your perspective on the nuclear deal? Oh, this is going to be fun. So I think. You know, I'm not an Iran Iranian history expert. We'll confess that, but I have read about it. I've read about uh, you know Persian, uh, the the original Persian culture there. The uh, in our in our culture we call it the invasion of Islam, where uh, Muhammad came in and took over the whole area, and we converted to Islam over time. I read about the Iranian Revolution, uh, and okay, here we go. I have another question coming in from a different one. I've read about the Iranian Revolution, the religious police. I read the book uh, Persepolis. I'm not sure if it's available in your country, but it is available in mine. It's about an Iranian girl that moved to Europe and had some things happen in her life. And um, I don't know. I try to keep up with world news, so I try to keep up with what's happening. And okay, so my perspective on the nuclear deal is I don't think that it was a very good deal for us. I think it was a great deal for you guys. And it was good that it avoided war. I don't want war. Never want war. Always want diplomacy. But the nuclear deal was ultimately very lax for Iran. Um, I think I mentioned this in other streams. It's some stuff kind of like, before we get to inspect your nucle nuclear facilities, we have to give you like, um, God, I think it's like a week notice or something. And, you know, here in America, we're always worried that Iran is building nuclear weapons. And it's like, yeah, we're coming to inspect next week and that gives you all kinds of time to hide whatever it is that you want and it relieves uh, restrictions on your economy and stuff and this is good in general the idea was that we would punish the Iranian economy 
and force the Ayatollah to drop the nuclear weapons. Ayatollah pretty much just wasn't going to do that regardless, so all it did is make the people more angry and make their lives more miserable. Whereas if we relieve the restrictions and actually allow Iran to trade freely, we're kind of giving them the carrot instead of the stick. Quality of living goes up, peace goes up, stability goes up, and they just, they're not going to want to do anything. Like, nobody wants to go to war when they're happy in their country. Nobody wants to be belligerent or threatening when they're very satisfied with how things are going. So keeping the people happy is a good idea, and I think that's a good idea. That's, that's part of the deal that I do like. Um, I am not very comfortable with Wahhabists having nuclear weapons. So you talk about, you know, Iran, you know, you, I know you have a parliament and, a, you know, something that resembles a democracy and stuff. But at the end of the day, the bulk of the decisions are going to be made by your religious leaders. It is a theocracy. And I do not like the idea of a theocracy, any of them, not just Muslim one. I, I, wouldn't, I would hate to have a Catholic theocracy have control of nuclear weapons. Uh, religious laws or leaders and nuclear weapons that believe that their choices are infallible from God and nuclear weapons are not a good mix. They're absolutely not a good mix. They're a scary, terrifying, god-awful mix, and that's something that worries the ever-living shiitake mushrooms out of me, is what happens when the Ayatollah gets old? What happens when he gets fidgety? What happens when he starts thinking that the things in his head truly are from God, and he gets these kind of thoughts that, you know, he can't go wrong, we can never lose, we can do what we want, God told me to do this, and he gives the order to use a nuclear weapon. There's no, there's no higher appeal, there's no second thought, there's no double checking. It's awful, it's scary, that terrifies me. And that's not what I want. Don't hate Iranians at all, that's not what we have going on. But, I don't like religious leaders with nuclear weapons. I don't like unstable people, same kind of thing like, I don't like North Korea, they're not religious at all, except for worshipping the, the, you know, Kim family. But I don't want them having nuclear weapons, because they're not stable or sane or anything. I don't want I don't want Donald Trump for president because he's crazy as hell and he's gonna have his finger on a nuclear weapon. I don't like that. You know these you know launching a nuclear weapon these days means the end of life on Earth as we know it. It's the end of all things. It's the apocalypse incarnate. We can't just be having that. We can't go willy nilly with these. Some countries talk about nuclear weapons as a deterrence, right? Hell no, they're not a deterrence, right? They're scary. They're frightening. They're uh, worries me. All this kind of stuff worries me. And Floor Liquors, yes, the YouTube copyright system is completely out of control. It's been broken for years. It's just that people are just now starting to pay attention to it. The YouTube copyright system has always, always, always been broken. I, it's, it's so screwed up. I've gotten copyrights from companies that claim to own, own all sound. That was a fun one. I've gotten copyright claims from companies that claim to own... They, have a co they had a patent on black screens, so any video that had a black screen got a copyright strike. I had them from companies that... Uh, I, had a, I had a Ghostbusters poster in my background, and because I didn't own the rights to the Ghostbusters poster, uh, I got a strike. There have been people that they review movies, like uh, I remember there was this movie review channel. They would go see a movie at midnight, and then they would sit in their car and review it. That's all they would do, Just and the whole video was them sitting in their car talking about the movie. They got copyright strikes for talking about the movie. There's the Merlin LTD company, which pretends to own the copyrights to stuff, and they don't. They don't. So you can get on YouTube right now, and all you can do is you can claim that you own the copyright to whatever in the hell it is that's in the video. You can make it up, and you can file a strike, and you can get people's monetization, which means you get their money for this period. And it takes me up to a month to fight the copyright strike. And okay, at the end you'll lose. You'll lose because you don't have any proof, right? But that disables my channel for a month, and the money that, that the video earned for the month that you had the completely false copyright strike, you get to keep! I don't get it back! You just get to keep it! So they had this company that goes around and strikes a buttload of videos, they lose every single appeal, and they just keep all the money, and then you're gonna say, okay, well then, why does YouTube just keep taking their copyright strikes? And that's what I'm going to say is, I don't know, because you would think that after like 80 false strikes that the that YouTube would be sick of their crap and no longer, you know, take their word for it. But that's not how that happened. If you can click a button on YouTube, you can steal people's videos, and they don't give a damn about it. 
Like, I'm, I might have, I might be in a little bit better position than some YouTubers because I know people. I can call Fwiz if I have to. But it's still a very bad system. It's very easily, there's no punishment for getting, for false copyright strikes. If I wanted to right now, let's say, um, I'm going to pick on, whew, let's say, I'm going to pick on Tabor Hill. Let's say that I'm afraid that Tabor Hill, hey, Natalie Bates, nice to see you. Yeah, I'd love to be president. Actually, not really. I'd hate being president, but... I'd, I'd suck it up and do the job instead of some of these other people doing it. Um, let's say that Tabor Hill is scary because he's making guide videos that are better than mine. And that's what a lot of people are saying, that his guide videos are better than mine. Let's say I don't want to compete with him, so what can I do? Right now, if I wanted to, I could go to Tabor Hill's channel and I could file a copyright strike on his videos. I could get his thumbnails, his live streaming, his monetization, and all his stuff shut down for a pretty significant period of time actually and I could just take all the money I would take the money from his videos as well now he would fight these strikes and a couple months later he would get his channel back and stuff and but I would keep the money it would screw him up really bad and at the end of the day the punishment for me would be nothing I could do this forever I could do this all week if I wanted to all month I could do it again to the exact same person with no punishment whatsoever and that is a completely broken system and YouTube is now, YouTubers can win Emmys now. YouTubers are winning like real like TV awards based on their performance. PewDiePie is partnered with Disney. People are, YouTubers are making movies and stuff. This isn't like a joke anymore, right? This is some serious business. You screwing over like multi-million dollar companies here on YouTube. This people, this isn't, a, this isn't about, oh, you know, my cat video got a strike. Well, now I can't show grandma. This is more like, no, I've spent the last seven years building an independent business here worth, um, I'm just going to be like, I don't know, some of these mega channels be like, I don't know, this YouTube channel's worth $10 million or whatever because my name is uh, Bayesian Canadian and I make Minecraft videos. And you strike him and you're just like, well, that, that business that he built is all done and it ends with the click of a button with no oversight, no, um, no repercussions, no nothing. It would be like... It would be like if I were to just walk into Walmart right now and announce that I own the patent for, I don't know, bubble gum. The bubble gum that you sell at Walmart, I own the patent for that. And just by walking in and yelling that I own it, I would get all the revenue that Walmart earns for a month. That's how broken the system is. And that's what I have to deal with. I fought off a false copyright strikes two weeks ago. It was the biggest bunch of crap I've ever seen in my life. It makes me so mad. Look, I don't want... You know, uh, I don't want to sit here and steal people's videos, and I understand the fact that I can't use music that I didn't purchase. Yeah, like, I get that. I'm not trying to, you know, jack people's stuff. I'm not trying to sit here and say that I need, I need to no protection and that copyrights aren't real. That's not, you know, I don't want to sit here and make AMV anime montages with Linkin Park and stuff and get 100,000 views and pay for my college off of other people's work. But the reality is that I could do work, real good work. I could I could just vlog something, right? Um, and get a strike for it. It's awful. I uploaded once like a 20 second video of a praying mantis that was dancing to a song. Now, the, every, rule of, every rule is different, but generally the rule of thumb is that less than 30 seconds of a video or music clip is acceptable in almost any scenario. So there's this praying mantis and he was dancing to some... I don't even remember the song at this point right and then the mantis flipped out and jumped on my friend and uh scared him and he screamed like a girl and he broke his phone and stuff and it was a hilarious video i got a copyright strike a permanent non-revocable copyright strike for that that i had to wait like six months to clear and it sucked this was back in the day before i was really doing youtube full time there was no appeal system there was no such thing as like hey, this is less than 30 seconds. There was no, hey, you know, I can mute the music, that it didn't really, you know, I'm not jacking this artist. And the reason we had music is because I was sitting on my front porch and there was a radio going on in the background. My friend was over there, you know, smoking some trees and drinking some alcohol. And uh, we just had the radio on. <laughs> and because the radio was on in the background, I got a strike. I've done that before. When I film at a convention or something, like, if I go to E3 or PAX or whatever, I have to be super, like, Nazi-level careful about the audio that I get, because I can get a strike for background audio. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. 
I don't know. I think the rules need to change a bit. They really do. I think it's going to happen. God bless Grade A under A. He's fighting hard for rule changes, and he's pretty much getting what he wants. We all are, slowly. They're taking it seriously. There's a lot of things to take seriously, a lot of reasons to take seriously. And we've got this. I'm getting shot. That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think I missed uh, several donations coming in, which I will catch up to at the end of this game. And I knew that was coming. As soon as I heard it, I was like, oh man, I'm getting the daffodils, and I know it. Alright, let's see if we can do a little team arrow here. There's one team arrow. Come on, somebody wants to play team arrow with me? No. There's another Team Arrow right in the head. I'm all about that Team Arrow, not Team Flash. Ah! Where's this guy? Get your pistols out of here. Do you like the Bernie Sanders? I kind of do. But it says, I wish PewDiePie would say something about this. PewDiePie did say stuff about this. PewDiePie's been complaining about YouTube forever. Like, if you watch, I mean, PewDiePie's videos, he, he disabled comments for a while. He talks he talks about the broken copyright system. PewDiePie does say things about this, but he doesn't make it a single issue for his channel like some other people do. Uh, thank you for the comment, Galactic Banana. Glad to know that I can be so inspiring. And Nicholas Schilling, of course you're allowed to rock the drift tag. Natalie Bates wants me to use the sword. I'm totally feeling it, so I will indeed use the sword next game. My nose is getting all itchy over here. All right, Natalie, I will sword people just for you. Let me turn on the dog cam here. Keep this busy. All right, so what do we have in the comments? Scoots Magoot 69 again says, One of my favorite YouTubers, Lost Paws, got his channel terminated for copyright and violating guidelines on appropriate videos. It's ridiculous a guy with 500k subs loses that and his job and his income. Yeah, so once your YouTube channel gets big enough, you know you can quit and make a full-time living on YouTube. I do that. This is my full-time job. If my channel gets terminated, I go to unemployment. I have to restart my entire life. And uh, Lost Paws probably it probably didn't even get it terminated for a good reason. Like, uh, people get their channels terminated for false violations of community guidelines. They get their channels terminated for false copyright strikes. It's really broken. Whereas some of the bigger channels are kind of immune to this kind of nonsense. Some channels just... Like a lot of the really big prank channels, they do stuff that is, and I agree with grade A under A on this one, just completely illegal. Just totally, completely broken levels of illegal. Pranks. And they say, okay, well if it's all actors and stage, then why are the pranks illegal if they're staged? That's because they present it as being real. And when you do that, you encourage other channels to copy you or other in impressionable people to copy you to think that it's okay to do something crazy and then say it's just a prank or these something gone sexual things that are borderline sexual harassment are completely false and weird and then we have people like uh, Danny Sarez thank you for subscribing I appreciate it somebody I think it was vegan gains this guy's his whole channel is about veganism which you know that's that's an okay cause I'm not vegan myself but I get it and he, like, makes death threats to people that eats meat and, like, encourages his subscribers to murder meat eaters and kill them and do all kinds of terrible things. And there's no punishment for that. None whatsoever. I've gotten community uh, flag videos for my videos about racism in the Deep South because I told real stories about real racist bad things that happened. And I use the N-word a lot in context, of course. But... Um... <clears throat> Other people that make death threats, nothing happens. All right, let me turn off the do cam so we can see the sword pretty well. There we go. <clears throat> it's really messed up. It really is. <sighs> All right. Hmm? 
Ah! Tried to get him off Bravo and I did not succeed. Biscuits! Now I have to play much more carefully. We gotta do a lot of sword flanks here. Nope, no, oh! I tried to do the drop and dash. I tried to, you know, where you hit the ground and dash, but I didn't have the momentum. Okay, so it looks like they're flanking back over here on this side as well. Probably gonna kill my teammates really shortly. Oh, they're in the house, great. Alright, well, let's see if I too can get in the house. I bet you went down here, didn't you? Yep, teammates got you mopped up. And I'm 0-3 with this sword! 0-3, baby. We're doing it. Melee weapons are hard, guys. That they are. You know it, I know it. Barack Obama knows it. There we go, got one. I'll see if we can get some other clowns around here. It's usually somebody up here. Just missed them, and I don't have time to get the guy behind me. Ah, ah, uh, they all saw me. Do they have UAVs? Yeah, they have UAVs and CUAVs up. Hey, Joe Novak, nice to see you, man. Rand got a $3 donation from my Rand guy again. All right, so let's see what he's talking about. <clears throat> Uh, says, thanks Drift, we love Americans too. Just a few quick facts, we are not Wahhabists like Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Uh, I think I, I did screw that up. I guess I'm just thinking about the stereotype of your religious leaders, you know, being religious. And Okay guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to use the sword against an army of subs. Like, this is getting really hard. There we go, alright. Uh, we're not Wahhabists like Saudi Arabia. We have issues with them. Good to hear. I have issues with them, too. Yeah, I know Iran used to be a secular republic before the uh, the revolution and the war with Iraq. I remember that. Uh, Iran is way less strict with religion, and Iran is pretty modern like Dubai. Parliament is also looking for a new Ayatollah. Uh, my understanding, I didn't... Does the parliament pick the Ayatollah? I thought the Ayatollah was more of a self-appointed... Uh, caliphate, like a religious authority. I mean, I could be wrong, but I thought the I didn't think the Ayatollah really had to bend to Parliament. I thought it was the other way around that Parliament ultimately has to bend to the Ayatollah. Come on, there we go. Uh, I know that you're not as crazy as Saudi Arabia, but there are definitely some. Uh, it would be very, very restrictive compared to America. That's true. Like compared to America, it would be like. A complete dictatorship. America is very, very uh, liberal with rights, though. That's just how we roll. That's how we do it. I'm struggling with the sword, but I'm gonna try, man. <clears throat> and I think uh, a lot of the stuff with Iran that we're familiar with in America probably has more to do with the, um, you know, religious revolution in the 70s, where they really had the legit religious police, and it was some scary stuff. I don't know what this guy's doing. I think Captain Produce wants to knife me. So that's probably what I'm thinking about when I'm talking about religious police and laws. But you do have laws like that. I know Saudi Arabia executes people for, I think it's called apostasy or insults against Islam. I don't think that's nearly as common in Iran. Or a lot of places, actually. Oh my gosh, okay. So much chaos here. Bum, 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 bum. It's, it's definitely different, though. I don't know. Maybe I'm out of my element. Um, Scoots Magoot says he got one for blacked out censored screen of a visual novel's explicit scene and censored any profane words. But there's a video, but there's videos that have the scene not censored. It was like two years ago and YouTube doesn't say anything about the rules change. Yeah, that's pretty bogus. So he self-censored the novel. He self-censored the nudity, right? And he... Okay, uh, guys in the chat, can we ban Mayureshi Messi? Thank you. That was an excellent fast ban. This sword, Natalie, man, you got me struggling here with this sword. Um, Pitbull, it is indeed a good idea to join an MCN if you're doing gaming, because that's the only way you're going to be able to monetize your gaming at all. That's just how that is. Oh, here we go. Mike Dodd has a question. Mike Dodd. Birdman Dodd. I got your DM, dude. That's so crap that that happened. That you got... Okay, so Mike Dodd has been having some issues donating lately. Um, what's he saying? He's saying, so I want you to use my question. He wants, I suck at sniping and want to get better. 
Do you have any drills or anything that you can say to do with sniper rifles that will help me improve? This is complicated. Um, let's see. I feel like... Hmm. I'm trying to read your question. Let's see. I suck at snipers and I want to get better. Uh, any drills and things I can do. I like the feel of the Drakan. I don't think the Drakan is going to be your ideal sniper rifle, uh, Birdman Dodd. I think that the one that you're really going to want to use is either the SVG or the Locust. Probably the Locust because it has the best handling attributes out of all of them. And as for drills, I think we're going to start with the class. We're going to go with Suppressor, Fast Hands, and yeah, make sure you have Suppressor and Fast Hands. Those two are going to be essential. You can put Rapid Fire on there if you want to. Uh, ballistic CPU shouldn't be necessary. Now, the trick to sniping isn't necessarily getting mad crazy quick scope skills. Now, that helps. But the trick is actually to line up shots and spawns really effectively. Once you kind of understand how the enemies are going to spawn, then you can understand how to kind of pre-fire your shots. Because once you can pre-fire... Ah, oh, I got shot. Because if you can pre-fire, you can line up your shots. You'll look like a quick scoping master, but all you're really doing is predicting where they're going to go. So this is some advice that Cross gave me. That's what you want to do. What You really just want to get up on... Uh, you really want to practice guessing where the enemy is going to be before they be there. You never want to have to try and react to them. You kind of always want to be ADS. You kind of always want to be... Um, in a good situation to begin with. Like, um, you gotta know your lines of sight, your flank routes, you gotta know the spawns better than the game knows them, so that then you can predict it. You can, you can be ahead of the curve on all this kind of stuff. And that's gonna work really, really well for you, I promise. That's gonna work so much better than anything regarding, like, yeah, you wanna, you wanna use this gun in this way and do this drill, and you wanna run these attachments and all that. Nah. It's all about knowing the spawns and controlling them. If you can control the spawns, and if you can know where your enemies are going to be, you got it. At that point, you got it under control, right? So that's what I'm going to tell you to do. And I think that's going to make you snipe a lot better. But quick draw is going to be just about essential, and so will suppressor. Because suppressor doesn't hurt the sniper rifles at all. Oh my god, what a stab. That's a stab, guys. That's how you make people cry. <laughs> I'm so gonna die and I know it. Hey, I got it! Ah! Uh. Yeah, once you can... Once you got a feel for where people are gonna be, you can just like pre-aim down sights and get them. It's the same kind of idea of using a combat knife or a sword or something. Once you kinda... Oop, nope. Once you kinda have an idea of what people are gonna do, man, you can go to town. You can do some good work. Ooh, I'm getting smacked by Andre Faker. Um, if you're really struggling and you just can't snipe anything, the Dracon's fine. Oh, man. There we go. I'm going to hang out over here by the robot. Come on, robot. You'd think with the robot being on Bravo, we could get it. Oh, is that the enemy robot? That's the enemy robot. Mm, mm, mm. So fluid. Thank you, Bioweapon X. Appreciate it, man. Not gonna win them all every day, but you can try most days. <laughs> I'm happy to get one or two. Sword's very satisfying. I know I'm not gonna win a game playing with the sword, but man, I can have a lot of fun. Mm, almost got him. Do you want to go bowling? Nah. What's your thought about the UK staying in the European Union? That's on you guys. That's not that's not my decision. I, I'm not as familiar with EU politics as I would like to be. I mean, I know things about it, obviously, but I do I do struggle a bit to keep up with all of their complexities. Do feel bad for Greece. They're kind of getting the double dick right now. They've got it with um, they got it with the, with the <laughs> bailout first, and now they're getting it over allowing in too many immigrants. Oh, Captain Produce! Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm, mm, mm. uh, whole Wheat Mayonnaise, the Black Ops 3 PC might be coming this coming weekend when I do the charity stream in Michigan. Because I think that's going to be like one of my only options. That's how that's going to be. Sword here be struggling. 
Um, we can block Kid Boo, please. Just go ahead and ban him. He doesn't need to be here. Oh, nope, come on, come on. Oh, I was gonna get another one. Trick shotting is fine. You can have fun trick shotting. Uh, I think I like futuristic shooters better than World War II ones, man. World War II ones just get a little bit boring. I'm still thinking about that blacked out thing. So you get banned for nudity even though you have censored bars on it? That's some crazy nonsense. Felix Torres subscribed. Thank you for subscribing, Felix Torres. I appreciate it. It's much appreciated, man. I got an email about my taxes. Okay. Yay, I'm gonna get my taxes done within a week. And then I'll have then I'll know how much money I have left to spend on the Tesla. Ooh, I'm excited about that. It's supposed to finish production and ship out pretty soon, so I'm pretty hyped. Thoughts on Donald Trump? I would pretty much have to do this every stream. Not a Trumpler supporter. Um, <clears throat> but there is something cool that's happening. I found out, uh, you know how the primary system works. We, we do the primary, and then we pick each party will pick their candidate, and then they go to the general election. Well, as per the Republican caucus rules, you have to get 51%... Uh, or no, it's 51.7. It's like, it's over 50% of the votes in order to get the nomination to be the Republican candidate for president. Well, it just so happens. What do I have unlocked here? Hmm, do I want to unlock a new gun? Not really. I want to give my, H I want to give my HBK 30 class another shake. I want to give this another go. It just so happens that um, Donald Trump does not have 50% of the, of the support yet. Instead, he's only got 45%. So, if the other candidates stay in the race, and we go all the way to the convention, and Donald Trump does not have 50% of the support, the convention reserves the right to nominate their own new candidate. That's the old money, the old power, the superdelegates, that kind of stuff. So... If Donald Trump doesn't get over 51%, he will not be, or he will be subject to the Republicans party mercy. Which, as you can see, there's a lot of Republicans that don't like Donald Trump. We have the Republican party is just about to split right now. It's just about to fracture right down the middle and become two parties. Probably like Tea Party closer to the Trump and then the more moderate Republicans on the side. So the Republican party has this difficult choice. If we go to a brokered convention, they can choose Donald Trump because he has the majority of the support of the people, but they also know that they're choosing the more extreme group of people to support, and they're going to alienate a large group of people, so it's just about going to guarantee a Democratic uh, victory, which will probably be Hillary. I hope it's Bernie, but it'll probably be Hillary. So that'll like guarantee the Democrats win, and that's going to make Republicans lose faith in the party. However, if they choose to support a new candidate and shaft Donald Trump, it's very likely that Donald Trump can run as an independent, and the people that supported Trump, especially in the primaries and stuff, the very sort of diehard, very right-wing Republicans, are going to end up leaving the party because their candidate is going to not be picked. It's going to feel very undemocratic to them. So the Republican Party, if we get a brokered convention we're very likely going to see a split in the Republican Party one way or the other, which hasn't happened. There hasn't been a split convention since, like, the 1880s where they picked uh, President Garfield. And we could have another, another mass, like, a third massive independent candidate for president that we haven't had since Ross Perot, which would be very, very interesting, except Trumpler probably has more support than Ross Perot. And I'm struggling right now. The sub-lobbies are getting real, guys. They really are. So that, to me... Um, is very interesting and then you have a similar kind of thing in the Democratic field everybody thought that uh, Hillary was just like a shoe-in like it was just guaranteed that Hillary was just gonna win this pretty much no competition she was gonna do great and everything was gonna be fine well as it turns out Bernie's coming on really really hard but he is not a Democrat Bernie Sanders is actually an independent and uh, so he wants a Democratic nomination though in the same way that Trump is really more of an independent but he wants Republican nomination so if the Democratic Party knows that the people are very strongly divided, they're going to alienate them no matter who they choose. They're probably going to go with Hillary. That's what the smart money you know, is betting on right now. I kind of hope that's not the case, but that's okay. So you could also see a split in the Democratic Party if Bernie Sanders decided to run as an independent. Now, he promised that he wouldn't. 
he said that he would you know rally behind whatever Democratic candidate and support them or whatever. But it's possible he could change his mind and run as an independent. And we could have, for the first time since like the 1700s or early 1800s, a four-way election in the United States representing a very broad spectrum of American politics. We would have uh, the two moderates in the middle, which would be like Hillary Clinton and let's say a replacement Republican like Mitt Romney rises from the grave or something to you know come out and run. So we'll just say like Romney Clinton. And then on the, like, we'll say the angry Republican right or the Tea Party right, we have Donald Trump. And on the angry liberal left, the, the you know, safe space college student left, we'll have Bernie Sanders. And you'll have this very big election. It'll be very different to see. It'll be, it'll be very interesting to me, though probably chaotic and damaging for the country as a whole. I don't know. That's just how, what I'm thinking about things right now. That doesn't necessarily mean any or all of this is going to come true. But it's very interesting that this is a real possibility for the first time in ever, you know. Securing Bravo. I'm gonna take Charlie as well while I'm over here. Over here. That's gonna be our daffodils. Love the hip fire in this gun, it does such good work. Kinda struggling to make this class work the way I want it to work. There we go, that's what it does best, but I can't get to, I can't challenge when I'm weak. Oh, good job, good job, Destiny. Nice, nice smackdown right there. Did we just kill each other? That's a really rare, uh, killing each other. That almost never happens. So yeah, that's what I think about all that. That could be extraordinarily interesting to see happening. Um... As it turns out, and the funny thing about this is, I, w I call this, I read about this on Reddit over the break, over my little vacation, not vacation, uh, trip to Greenwood, Mississippi. Oh my god, Pepiger just came back from the grave and murdered us. Um, it's kind of like the revenge of Ronald Reagan, because in the late 70s to early 80s, the Republicans kind of had this strategy to build a new base out of their party out of their party the republicans didn't want a moderate base because they tend to be fickle so they decided to try to appeal to a what they call the religious right it's a big thing here in the united states it's um conservative christians or just generally christians in general religious people which tend to be somewhat more conservative and right leaning that's i don't think many of you would find that insulting that's just facts right i'm going to go back behind this truck so they worked very very hard to appeal to the religious right and they also worked very hard to empower this group and make this group much more influential in politics than it had been in the past previously the religious groups were kind of divided between you know democrat and uh, republican and all that sort of liberal and uh, conservative so we've very greatly empowered the religious right but on the flip side we've also somewhat lost control of them because the religious right is the group that's kind of rallying around the Tea Party and Donald Trump and the more the more hardline Republicans and the more moderate Republicans, which are the ones in power, the ones with the money, you know? Oh man, that was a huge fail right there. They don't support that kind of nonsense. They're 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 on the money train, not the not the hardcore Tea Party train. So they've lost control of their core base and now they have to decide if they're going to abandon the base try to reshape it to change public opinion or, or what they're going to do with it. It's kind of very, it's very interesting to me. I think this kind of stuff is very interesting. So let's see, we got some donations coming in. Um, X Rima donated $3, says, What's your opinion on DLC weapons being accessible through single player? Oh, uh, through single player? Oh, you mean supply drops. Uh, okay, I think we mean supply drops. Although they're not OP, and it's not like being pay to win, uh, people would like to try and use them, I agree. For the heck of it, making it a lot more pay to use. Also, I think they promised it would be cosmetic only. You're right, they did promise it would be cosmetic only. Uh, the team at Treyarch promised that it would be cosmetic only, and I think it's pretty clear at this point that Activision overrode Treyarch's decision and they wanted more uh, not cosmetic only options. Guess it wasn't making enough money for them. That's, that's corporate America for you, gosh! Daggummit, Derkin. Um, I don't like that the only way to get them is through supply drops. Because you're kind of overpaying for them. You're paying for a chance to get the new weapon. People didn't like that the Ripper came with the season pass. Or that you had to pay to get the Ripper even though it was only a few dollars. 
but now you could easily spend hundreds and not get the new guns. I, I've spent way too much money on the stupid supply drops for in-depth purposes, and you know, you guys probably saw I tried to make my little opening videos and make a little money off of it. But I still don't have the MX Garand, but there's no reason for me to try to get the MX Garand, because if I do, I don't have a guarantee to get it. Like, it's not... It's not like Counter-Strike, where if I want a fancy schmancy gun, I can go on there and I can just legit drop a hundred bucks and buy it. Mine's more like I can drop two hundred dollars and get a chance to buy it. I can drop a hundred and fifty and get three wrenches. Again, that happened to Cross. Cross has got the wrench like four times. The guns are super duper rare, which means they're ultimately expensive when it comes to random. And on top of that, they're not guaranteed. There's no... there's duplicates, so you could get the same crap over and over again. And what really further devalues it is that you can't sell your duplicates. You can trade them in, but you only get like, I don't know, some, not, what, not what they're worth, right? Because if you, if you get like five wrenches, right, and you trade in your duplicates, each wrench is going to get you ten crypto keys, which isn't worth flip. You can't sell it for real money when you had to spend real money to get it. In most cases, if you, you'll get a few randomly, right? And it doesn't last as well, because next year, Black Ops 3 is not going to be the game. We're all, not all, but a lot of us will be playing whatever the new COD game is. That's just how that goes. That's fine. And all the money that you spent to unlock your fancy schmancy weapons here in Black Ops 3 is going to be completely devalued, which is a very bad thing. Got a big comment from Natalie Bates. Um, yep, Natalie Bates, that's very good advice right there. That's exactly what I would say. Thank you for quoting me. I'm not playing very well. I think I don't care at this point. I'm just having... I just have fun talking to you guys. Um, I ran... Uh, 021 says there is actually a parliament and assembly of experts and people that vote for their members. That I didn't know. Good to know, though. Challenge. Shouldn't have challenged that. Um, <clears throat> Ayatollah choosing a new Ayatollah. And the new Ayatollah cannot be from the same family like a kingdom. Okay, that's very good to know. We can't have it familiar. Familial, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, good to know. Hmm. Makes it feel a little bit more progressive than what I had in mind. <laughs> Dylan Thompson, glad that you appreciate my thoughts. Unfortunately, I did not get to vote in Super Tuesday, though my wife did. Uh, my wife voted to support... Well, I think she wants to keep her vote private, so I won't spoil If you want to know who she voted for, you can go ahead and ask her. A lot of you guys can probably guess, but... Ah, this ain't working for me. I think it's time to get a new gun. Guys in the chat, what new gun would you like to see me use? I'm thinking the crossbow. I think it's time to break out a little crossbow action here on stream. You guys let me know what you want to see. Um, I'd kind of rather do the crossbow, but if there's a particular weapon that you want to see me use, I will use it for you. Go ahead and type in the chat right there. Oof, got more donations coming in. Kinda scary, kinda scary. Much scares. Woo, 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 woo. Captain Produce, get out of here. I'm tired of you. All your produce. I eat meat, I'm a carnivore. <laughs> we got Argus Crossbow. Trevor Ingram, nice to see you. Hashtag feel the burn. Uh, Vesper. Crossbow Marshall 16. Crossbow, cross, yeah, crossbows. I had a feeling it would be pretty popular when I brought that up. Uh, we have some, we have some Marshall 16 requests rolling in. Got some donations rolling in too. Um, Razorback Weevil. We got a lot of Argus as well. Weevil, Pharaoh, Vesper, VMP. <clears throat> I think the majority is. I think the majority is still slightly in favor of the crossbow. I had a feeling that would happen, uh, but there is, it's not as not as strong as I thought it would be. I thought it would be really like heavy on the crossbow. It's only barely in favor of the crossbow, but that's still the most popular one. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that one as planned, if I have all the attachments for it and stuff. I'll probably run it akimbo. I like it better akimbo. Actually, I like it almost any way I can get it. That's what she said, but... Uh, let's see. Do I have a do I have a crossbow class? Let's this probably is not that one. Let's take this stupid shotgun class and rework it. Special crossbow. I don't think I have dark matter for it. No. Um, boop. I'll do this. 
And we want a dual wield. We're going to take that off and uh, take off perk one greed. We're going to put on perk two greed. And we don't have scavenger. Oh, snap. No scavenger. Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh oh. No scavenger. This is going to be rough, and I know it. What do I have available? Contract. I'm going to start ripping some people. No scavenger crossbow, guys. We're going for it. That's how it's going to go. Uh, this is going to be scurry. Okay. Let's see what happens in Donation Town, because some did come in. <clears throat> Rose Gold iPhone 6S, interesting name, says there is. <laughs> Do you think Treyarch slash Activision will keep the supply drop weapons niche? I hope so. I don't think so. I think some of them are going to be a lot more general in the future. I think they're going to go that route, but I hope so. And why do you support Bernie Sanders? <sighs> I think he is the most genuine candidate, the guy that actually wants. To help people. He's the guy that actually wants to do something about it. If you look at his voting record, he's the only independent uh, senator in the Senate, congressman, whatever. So he's not Democrat or Republican, not beholden to party politics. The guy was at, like, if you, if you want to talk about, like, uh, race relations or whatever, or Black Lives Matter, this dude was at the civil rights protests. Like, he got attacked by dogs and police and, um, okay, now I'm about out of ammo. Like, this guy actually got butt whoopings for black people. And, and, you know, he's obviously not black. I think that's a big deal. For me, that's a big deal. That he's, you know, stuck up, stood up for somebody else. On other issues, we've got, you know, it's fairly progressive in a lot of things. Gay rights, whatever. That's not my, I'm not gay, so that's not my jam exactly. But that's fine that we're still sticking up for other people. Uh, legalization of marijuana. That's a big one, because that'll actually help our entire country by keeping people out of prison, redoing the private prison system, because we've got private prisons everywhere. That's a big one. Uh, probably the biggest reason, though, is has got this big platform about uh, redoing campaign finance reform, uh, ending super PACs, so we'll take some money out of politics. And also, there are loopholes right now where foreign countries can actually contribute to our elections through super PACs. Like, they can funnel money into our election cycles, which... I just don't think should be happening, that foreign countries should be able to donate to our politicians. That needs to go. He wants to end that. So that's a big deal to me. Um, what else is there about the burn? Uh, you got some other good ideas. Rebuilding infrastructure is something we should have done forever ago. Some good stuff. Downside. Everybody's cr crying that he's going to end the economy and crash and burn. It'll be World War III. I don't think that's going to happen. Not going to lie to you that his entire economic plan is very expensive and redistributive. I'm completely aware of that. Some of the things I agree with, like um, rebuilding our infrastructure, very expensive plan, but a very good plan. Uh, increasing capital gains tax, very good plan. There's some other things, uh, but by and large, it's just too pricey. Bernie Sanders would be the perfect candidate if the year were 1999 and we were coming off of that awesome, like, or the year 2000, and we were coming off that big, like, Bill Clinton booming economy surplus kind of thing where we had all kinds of money to spend. If we'd taken these plans and implemented them in the past, it would be amazing. We would be, our country would be so much better off, but right now we're kind of broke, so we can't afford this, which is unfortunate. That's the most unfortunate thing is to not be able to afford the best uh, thing for your country. So sometimes the best thing is to be cheap and not do that. Raising minimum wage. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that either, but there is definitely an issue with not having a living wage. Like, we don't have a living wage. If you make minimum wage, you don't have the money to pay your bills. If you make minimum wage, you have to work like 75 hours just to survive, which is very bad. So that that's kind of the issue there. I'm not ignorant th about the weaknesses, but... Hmm. Okay, Scoots Magoot says, Hey Drifter, I don't know if you've heard, but thoughts on the UN trying to ban the product tonight of anime? Both normal and arrow gore, and hentai that depicts violence toward women. Um, oh crap! I don't think that's going to make any difference. 
Um, I don't think it would cut into the Japanese economy that huge. I don't think their anime exports really make that big of a difference in their overall economy. They're more, you know, technology-oriented and consulting-oriented these days. Um, banning violence against women... That kind of goes against my free speech bubbles. Like, I don't... It ultimately is... It cuts into freedom of speech and expression, which is not ideal, even if I don't agree with that speech or expression. And... I don't think it's going to change anything. I think people will still get it. It's that's that's just a waste of time. UN bans all kinds of stuff. UN does all kinds of crazy programs, and uh, their standards on a variety of things are way higher than ours in the United States. They consider us to have bad gender inequality and race inequality and all sorts of stuff. So, I'm not really concerned about the UN. I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever. If I were you, I wouldn't worry about it either. I think your anime is still going to be just fine and intact. And Archangel dropped 420. Says here's uh, here's a donation because I love you. Also, uh, did you see the amount? Haha, <laughs> yeah, 420. Yolo, 420. Blaze it. <laughs> yeah, 420. Blaze it. Got a new sponsor. Welcome the Tyven Show. Thank you for sponsoring the channel, man. One of the handful of mod sponsors we got here. Thanks for the sponsorship, man. I appreciate it. Your messages show up a lot easier on chat now. I really badly need a uh, freaking uh okay I'm trying to wall run here just so that I oh gosh I'm trying to wall run just so that I can get hey Pete bot five good to see you just so that I can pick up my ammo again there we go we shut him down Ah, uh, got cut down again as well. Uh, we need the pupper cam right now? Alright, well, since you're a sponsor, I'll go ahead and drop on that puppy cam. I'll drop on the puppy cam for this game. He's just doing fat dog stuff. I mean, look at him. He's being so fat. Uh, when did I get the Shadow Claw? I've had the Shadow Claw for a long time. J-Hub is a whore, I agree. He sleeps with so many men. Kino Lino, I'll see you later, man. Secure the objectives. Yep, uh, Thiago was one of the first mods to sponsor. Tyvon Show, I'm glad to hear that you got all your stuff working, man. Because uh, your, your issues with uh, Stream Warrior were really confusing me. Don't got time for that. Wonder, can I hit the wraith with this thing? That was a total waste of ammo, but yeah, you can hit the wraith. I don't know how much damage it does, but you can, you can hit people with it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh. Ah, getting shreked a little bit. I think I'm getting tired. I think I'm just getting a little bit tired. Should make a new series called Fat Dog Stuff. I should do that. That should be a YouTube series. I tried to I tried to do this series called Ozzy Goes or First Person Dog Adventures, but it just didn't pan out. It wasn't as it wasn't as bumping as I thought it would be, unfortunately. There we go. Oh, you fooled me. Wow, Pro Black L1 fooled the crap out of me. We're gonna have to get Bravo. It's not gonna work if we don't get Bravo. Oh, that's bad. Go ahead and get in here. <laughs> I think we're gonna end up losing them all too. Uh, Tree Squad, man. I've been streaming for I think I'm going on about two hours here now. So it's been a little bit. It's been a been a hot minute. And that thing is annoying. And there was a mine in there. Awesome. How do you hack your dog? I don't know. It just he does dog stuff. I don't have to hack him. He's already doged. Oh no! Come on, get over here. 
Come on, we're gonna have to go somewhere else. Oh, this is hell on earth now. This is bad. Whoop. Yep. I think that, uh, I think Captain Produce is gonna be running the... Our Sally Boy is gonna start running the train on us now. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, Jay Novak, I have so many challenges left, it's not even funny. I got a hundred challenges if I have any. Alright, you've made me do it. I have to shoot your wraith down with my crossbow. Or not, it's looking at me. Scary, bye-bye. Ha ha ha! Mmm. Almost got a rip in. Black hats are not worth using. Hello, Greasy Glue 0960. Good to see you, man. I think Captain Produce has my guns now. No, he's got a single. That's okay. It's whatever. It's whatever. It's fun. Now, I don't think J-Hub is gay. I think he's just trans. He's J-Hub asexual. This triggers me in the best way possible. You guys are nutty. You guys are nuts. And this ripper does not last as long as it used to. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Ah! No, I wanted to rip the... <laughs> I wanted to rip that thing down super fast. Opinions on Kashich? Oh, he's just there to troll people. Ah, getting a little tired. I think it'll wrap it up at the end of this game. I gotta go prepare for a birthday party and then a dinner and a variety of other things. Had a good day streaming, though. It's so much more relaxing than helping Grandma with dementia problems. <laughs> hey, Empty Obsession, nice to see ya. j -Hub says he's gonna whip my ass at PAX, bruh. Uh, I'll catch you in a Pokeball. I'll name you Snorlax. Mm. Let's have a little fun with Boomy. Why not, huh? You're a good boy. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Uh, I got one more donation that rolled in from Scoots Magoots, says Mintotype Production, stupid autocorrect. Not exactly my anime, but I know others like watching some with violence like that. I'm into the innocent rom-coms. JK, they aren't, they aren't that innocent sometimes. Yeah, no, sometimes they're really not that innocent. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for me today. I've streamed a little bit over two hours. I'm going to go get ready for a birthday party and a dinner and some other kind of things. I hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed watching me play. Hope you learned something. Had some good games, had some bad games, had some fun opinions on a variety of topics. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. And I gotta find the end stream button somewhere. Where's that at?